The U.S. State Department has recently expressed disappointment at the Indian government's refusal to allow a delegation on religious freedom to visit the country this week. Three delegates from the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom were scheduled to visit India, but they were not granted visas. One of those delegates is Father Thomas Reese, and he joins us now from our Washington, D.C. Bureau. Father, thanks for joining us today. Good to be with you, Heather. What was the purpose of your delegation's scheduled trip to India? Well, the reason we like to visit countries is so that we can uh, get the actual facts and circumstances of the situation of religious freedom in a country by visiting it, by talking to religious leaders, talking to people on the ground, and also talking to government leaders to get their side of the story. Our responsibility is to advise the president and the State Department on the situation around the world in terms of religious freedom. And India is, uh, is one of the places that uh, we wanted to get a firsthand view and understanding of the situation uh, so we could be very fair and accurate in our report. Father, did the Indian government give any reason for not granting the visa to you? No, not really. Uh, this is actually the third time that they have turned us down, not given us uh, visas. Uh, which is kind of sad. Uh, I mean, India is a dynamic democracy. Uh, it claims to be a non-sectarian state. Uh, it has pledged itself to international agreements on religious freedom. Uh, so what is it hiding? Why isn't it willing to have us come and look at the situation? And what is the you situation know, uh, that you wanted to look at? What are the concerns about religious freedom in India? Well, one of the biggest concerns is there's a lot of inter-religious conflict and violence going on. Uh, there, has, there have been situations where thousands of people have been killed in conflicts between Muslims and Hindus. We've uh, seen situations where churches have been uh, burned, been attacked by mobs. Uh, and sometimes the police are there and they're just standing by doing nothing or, you know, participating. Uh, this is not the way governments should act, not governments that are committed by their constitution and international agreements to protecting religious freedom. And what have you seen with Christian uh, churches as targets in particular? Is the violence there increasing? What's going on with that? Well, what's most disconcerting is that uh, uh, recently uh, there's been a lot of Hindu nationalist groups that have been pushing an, you know, an all Hindu India agenda, basically telling Christians, go, go, go to Europe. India is only for Hindus, telling Muslims, go to Pakistan. And uh, so we've seen that kind of atmosphere, that kind of rhetoric encouraging uh, radicals to attack churches, to disrupt uh, religious services, to uh, uh, you know, actually injure and rape uh, uh, people who, you know, Christians and others who, you know, don't follow the same faith they do. Uh, this is just terribly unacceptable. And uh, some of these groups, frankly, are groups that support uh, uh, the party of, uh, of Modi, uh, you know, and he needs to speak out against it. He needs to condemn it. And not just in English to the international press, he needs to do it to his own followers and, uh, and the local languages that they understand. What is your hope at this point uh, going forward? You have not received visas, you've applied multiple times. What's the plan now? Well, our plan is to uh, do our report to the best ability that we can. Uh, we have uh, uh, other sources of information, obviously journal, uh, newspaper reports, uh, yeah. NGOs and other groups, religious leaders who come and visit us in Washington and report on what's going on there. Uh, we would have liked to have had firsthand uh, personal contact with the Indian people in their country and with their governments and their religious leaders. But, you know, we're going to do the best we can with our report. Uh, lacking that uh, personal contact. All right, and Father, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, these radical Hindis and their, and their attacks on churches? I know our audience is especially interested in that. Well, it's, it's really uh, bad. Uh, you know, one of the things, for example, is 
that, uh, for example, if uh, a Hindu decides uh, he wants to become a Christian, okay, uh, you know, I mean, uh, under international agreements and any concept of religious freedom, a person should be able to follow their conscience to either uh, change their faith or keep their faith, whatever they want. Uh, but they're, they're uh, stirring up trouble frequently by saying, oh no, these people are being forced to become Christians, which is utter nonsense. Uh, and, and then, so that riles up mobs and crowds to attack uh, Christian uh, churches and Christian ministers. Uh, this is the kind of thing that we're very concerned about. All right, Father Thomas Reese, a lot going on, a lot to pray about. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome.